Hey friends, welcome. You good, Reese? Welcome back to Hot News. Reese almost died at the intro there. Anyways, today's video sponsor is Floatplane, except for they're not sponsoring us. You guys sponsor us when you subscribe to us over on Floatplane. You get no ads over there and you get pre-release content on everything besides hot news and videos that we make the day of. It's $5 per month and you get access to all of our videos ad-free, no sponsors, no nothing besides higher quality video because they use a better bit rate and just better setup over there. So in case you wanna do it, you can check us out at Floatplane. In case you don't want to do it, just watch us here on YouTube. Either way, you're supporting us. It means a lot. And with that being said, let's talk about the news today. Which is NVIDIA decides that uh, they've had enough. They're done. Damn it, Intel. You think you're going to get ahead on the GPU market? Never. You are never going to beat us. You think that one feature that you announced that we didn't have, we're going to let you stand for it? No. Intel, you know what? We're launching integer scaling. You don't get to do it first. Suck on that, big blue. You're my boy, blue! At least that's how I imagine the person writing the notes for the latest driver from NVIDIA felt when they were, uh, you know, letting everybody know just how good NVIDIA is gonna be in the future. Because not only does the new game-ready driver bring up to 23% performance increases in various games, but it also introduces new features such as integer scaling and image sharpening features and ultra low latency, which is one of the things that AMD promoted at their E3 stream for the RX 5700 series, talking about how they were reducing latency with their settings on AMD Radeon drivers. Well, now apparently NVIDIA is just like, yeah, we can do it too, no big deal. Oh, and Intel, you had that nice exclusive feature? No, it's ours. We're gonna have image sharpening first, not image sharpening, integer scaling. In case you don't know what integer scaling is, you can check out our video that we did on Hot News where Intel announced this, but basically it's really good for retro games and scaling video games up to a large size instead of making it look all weird. It actually makes retro games look good on modern panels or you could just buy a CRT TV and then, you know, you'd be good there. Back in high school, I had this like gigantic one. It had like some crazy resolution. I think it was like in the 1400 range. I couldn't even remember. Like it was, it was a weird aspect ratio. It wasn't 2560 by 1440. I think it was bigger than that. I'm pretty sure the first number was in the 3000 range. It was crazy. It was huge. It weighed probably like a good 10 kilos. I loved it so much, it made me happy. That has nothing to do with the news, but Nvidia's new drivers are actually slapping features everywhere, increasing performance, but also didn't necessarily come without any uh, hindrances in the rollout because apparently with the drivers that came out yesterday, 436.02, uh, there was a bug that forced you to always install GeForce Experience, which in case you don't remember, that has been an option where you can say, just install the drivers, no GeForce Experience. Well, apparently if you clicked just the drivers, it still installed GeForce Experience anyways. They have since updated it, it's been fixed. The new NVIDIA drivers will not automatically force install GeForce Experience. NVIDIA saying it was a, it was, you know, a table problem in their installation, or they are just trying to force things on you. Very violent company, you know? It's a feature it's not a bug you're bugging me how about i feature your face on my fist is what nvidia is saying probably behind the scenes very violent company you know outrageous how much they they get away with harming people that's all a joke just in case anybody wants to think that i'm not kidding anyways let's get rid of my cringy humor and move on into intel's cringy humor which is their naming scheme for their upcoming cpus because Unlike NVIDIA, who realizes that the 11 series sounds a little weird, you know, 1180, probably not something anybody wants, so let's call it 20, 2080, that's great, perfect. Uh, and then we'll call things 16, whatever, NVIDIA. Go smoke your mushrooms elsewhere. Um, let's talk about Intel, because they're going from the 9 series all the way up to the 10 series, and we're gonna have things such as, like, the Cascade Lake 10980, 10980 XE. Why? Why would you do this? 18 cores, 36 threads, great. But uh, you're gonna give me an extra digit that's gonna make it pronounce funnier? Like, we have the 9900K, the 9700K, those are easy. But the 10700K? The 10900K? What? This is, no. Mm -mm, bad. Stop it. Ch just re reset. Reset, it's not that hard. Nvidia did it way back in the day. GTX 900, 9000 series went to the GT x 200 series for whatever reason it, you can you can do it nobody cares about continuity just change the number don't make it weird and hard to pronounce but you know what's hard to pronounce nothing to do with this next article which is gigabyte has smashed some world records thanks to the new epic 7002 cpus using their motherboards they uh they came up with a, quite a few world records including but not limited to a bunch of spec rate benchmarks smashed congratulations gigabyte well done good pr marketing stuff 
And then in case you didn't hear, Coursera unveiled a brand new wireless keyboard recently called the K57 RGB, featuring their Slipstream wireless technology as well as the Capilex LED technology. In case you need a smaller form factor wireless mechanical keyboard, I'm gonna stick with my Drevo, which is full freaking Cherry MX. Thank you. And can have Bluetooth and can have a dongle adapter and can be wired. And then probably in what is gonna be a very hot monitor for a lot of people to pick up, HP announced their Omen X27 gaming monitor, which has a lot of features that you might want, such as, uh, you know, it's 27 inches, it's TN, which is okay, not something everybody wants. It's 2560 by 1440, has FreeSync too, that's amazing, has HDR, but it's 1440p at 240 hertz, $650. I'll take, I'll take one. $650, yes please. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out in September. So, yes please. Thank you, HP. Something I won't say yes please to is this dev kit design for the PlayStation 5. What is this hideous monstrosity of nonsense? No, mm -mm, bad, ugly. What is with all of these designs where people make something that's supposed to be boxy-like and a rectangle and they're just like, what if we smush it a bit? You got things like the Radeon 5700 XT stock edition. It just looks like the designer accidentally pulled down like a line in the middle of a box. I was like, huh, that actually looks kind of good. That's what the, it looks like they're trying to build an apartment when it should just be a box that does things. It's a dev kit anyways, and it looks like it, it would be fake. That's probably not what the PlayStation 5 is gonna look like. So just calm down, Brett, speaking to myself. But you know what you should get hyped for? Microsoft Edge because the Chromium-based Edge router is now available in beta. You can check it out at the link in the video description. You can uh, get your Edge on, friends. But you know who? what is an Edge case? Solar power and Tesla giving solar power to Walmart and the Walmart being like, we're gonna sue you now because your solar panels have resulted in fires at our stores because of shoddy worksmanship and not installing them properly. Walmart's not only asking for Tesla to pay up, but also to remove all the solar panels from the 240 Walmart stores that it's at. And likely Tesla's not gonna take this one lying down. They're gonna, they're gonna feisty about it and fight it. And then at the Hot Chips conference, Tesla actually unveiled their brand new AI chips that are supposed to be 21 times faster than the previous NVIDIA chips that they were using in their autopilot systems in their cars. It's actually gonna be pretty cool because each Tesla is gonna come with two of these gigantic chips because redundancy stuff, you wanna make sure that your computer isn't gonna go crazy and decide to kill the old lady on the side of the street thinking that it's a squirrel that it's supposed to run over. Squirrel! Speaking of a squirrel that should be run over, there's a fourth Matrix movie in the works. Like, I get the Keanu Reeves craze. Keanu Reeves, great. He's breathtaking, yes. But why do we need a fourth Matrix movie? The, the third one wrapped up pretty conclusively. Trinity's dead. This is gonna be a prequel. Why do we need this? The second and third Matrix movies sucked Sucked So, why do we think it's gonna be any better with a fourth one? I mean, it's not like Keanu Reeves' acting is what made the first one great. Let's just be honest. As much as people love him, he's not a very, moving on. I know Kung Fu. Show me. Apple cards are now available to everybody in the US who has an iPhone. You have to apply for it, obviously, and you have to get approved for it, but you can now apply for it. There's no like waiting list or invitation that you have to wait for for the Apple card. So in case you want to be further ingrained in the Apple ecosystem and have no hope of ever escaping, put your money in their hands. Let's end out this episode with a bit of YouTube news, which is, uh, first of all, that a direct messaging feature that nobody ever used on this platform is going to disappear in September. Cool. And then, uh, YouTube is actually suing one of their users who was using DMCA takedown requests to get people's addresses in order to dox them. So apparently this person made false claims against three well-known Minecraft streamers and then demanded they make payments of money in, in order to not have their accounts terminated for false copyright claims. And there was obviously the threat of doxing over their heads as well. It's good to see that YouTube is actually sticking up for this and suing the person that abused their system. Finally. They're, they're actually taking things seriously. But in the least serious bit of news we have, this is this article from Gizmodo. YouTube concedes robot fight videos are not actually animal cruelty after removing them by mistake. Yes, a lot of uh, YouTube channels that featured videos of robots fighting each other and destroying one another, they were taken down because of animal cruelty reasons. Which, I mean, that's the future we're headed towards. Robot rights are like human rights and we need to recognize that and treat them with respect. Our coming robot overlords definitely wouldn't want to find a video out on the internet where we say robots aren't equivalent to regular life. They wouldn't want to find that. So, you know, they, robots have rights too. 
and we shouldn't force them to fight. And I think YouTube was in the right for taking these down because robot cruelty is no joke. Silence, it is time to put the humans to death. And that joke's over. So let's end hot news there. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out this video on Floatplane. It's been live for a little bit over there and there was no Floatplane ad on Floatplane. So meta. Okay, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to Hot News if you want to stay up to date on all of the tech news that's going around on the internet. I'm Brett with the Hot News channel. See you in the next one.